what is the secret of your joy? Lots of said, oh, that. For this you do one thing, all of you. Start today, okay? This is a simple exercise everybody must do. At the end of the day, you sit in your bed and look back on the whole day. This happened. You heard of Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu? Lao Tzu is a celebrated Zen master today. Even then, he gathered a certain number of disciples around him. It's part of the Zen tradition that when the master or the guru is dying, people gather around for a final message. So at the age of eighty-three or eighty-four, he was passing. So people gathered around him and asked him, Master, what is the secret of your joy? You, you know, he faced lot of extreme situations in his life. He was accused of things that he had never thought of and he went through troubles. So people asked, you went through so many things, but you were always joyful. What is the secret of your joy? Lao Tzu said, oh, that… it's just that every day in the morning when I woke up, I used to get a question. The question is, today shall I be joyful or miserable? Till now, I just happened to choose joy, that's all. So, have you made your choice, I'm asking? Every day in the morning, if a question comes to you, I will come and ask you a question every day in the morning. Today, you're going to be joyful or miserable. What's your choice? You must make this choice every day. Today, I'm going to be joyful. Joy is not a goal by itself. It is just that when you're joyful, you're pleasant to the world. When you're joyful, you're sensible in your head. When you're joyful, you will not do stupid things against yourself. There is nobody who has not been happy, everybody's been happy, but the problem is they're not able to maintain it, that's all. So, you don't have to enforce any resolutions upon yourself, just little tools to make sure that you don't sink. Suppose, Let's say your life is done, you're on your deathbed, tomorrow you're going to die. If you look back and see, is it all worthwhile? Have you done things that you really wanted to do? Don't look at it at the end of your life, you must look at it at the beginning of your life. Suppose you're on your deathbed, you're going to die, maybe you lived a hundred years, but look back and see, is, has life been worthwhile? Have you done? things re that really matter to you or no? Because most people get truthful only if death is imminent. Otherwise, they know how to lie to themselves and to everybody. Most people tell the truth only when you put a gun to their head, unfortunately. I'm saying don't wait for somebody else to put the gun, you put it tonight and watch. Suppose I'm going to die now, have I done things? that I really worthwhile in my life, things that I could be proud of, things that are worth spending my life upon. Has my life been done this way? If you just look at this, you will make an impact on the society, whatever you do. Whatever you do, you will make an impact. We do not know what you can do and cannot do in your life. Whether you're going to become the richest man in the world or the most beautiful woman on the planet, you're going to climb Mount Everest or you're going to beat Mr. Bolt in a hundred meter race, I don't know about these things. But every one of you can strive to become a wonderful human being and nobody can deny that to you. Nor people, nor world situations, nor inclement weather, can deny this to you, that you want to be a wonderful human being, nobody to stop you. So I want you to do a simple process, write down <clears throat> three things, 
Write down three things when you go home. Whatever you think makes a human being into a wonderful human being, just three things and make it a reality in your life. What you think is the highest, don't do what I want, please do what you want. In your life, if you do not do what you want, it'll become a wasted life. You don't have to do what somebody else wants, but three things that you think will make a human being into a truly wonderful human being. These three things make it a reality. As it is said, a man is ill only because he does not know how to be still. Because in stillness, you are in touch with a dimension way beyond creation. So if one has to attain to that grace, at least a certain amount of stillness has to enter your life. For this to happen, a certain level of silence has to enter your life. If right now if it is not coming, at least practicing a little bit of mouth. In an hour, if you are speaking fifteen hundred and seventy-three words right now, how many more? How many words do you spit out in a minute? Fifteen hundred seventy-three, you are actually doing that many? I thought that's impossible <laughs> Okay, I believe you <laughs> So whatever number you're doing, see if you can articulate the same things that you're saying with half the number of words. Suddenly you will become extremely conscious of everything. Right now, our oral diarrhea is happening. You're doing fifteen seventy-three, it's diarrhea, okay. <laughs> now, if you have to hold back half the words and still say the same things, now you have to be very conscious, otherwise you cannot say it. Just try this and see. Tomorrow, one day. Hmm? In an hour, normally what number of words you utter? Make it half, don't curtail your activity, still say the same things. But with half the words, how wonderful the whole world will feel, you know <laughs> World will be a wonderful place, I'm telling you tomorrow, if everybody does this. Many marriages will be saved. <laughs> this is a simple exercise everybody must do. At the end of the day, you sit in your bed and look back on the whole day from the morning you got up, how you've been going around. You will see ninety percent of the time you're quite stupid. I'm being generous with percentage, believe me <laughs> If you're given little work, if you're just given little responsibility, suddenly you become so important. You become bigger than the universe suddenly. How many times you expanded beyond the size of the universe? If you look at it, you will see most of the time it's bloated. <laughs> How many times you became immortal? that is you're not conscious of your mortality. Just… and how many times did you walk around looking at people and things around you without any sense of involvement? Just three things you watch out. You will see, you'll have to laugh through the night. Don't start crying. Just learn to laugh at your stupidity, you will see. All the rubbish you carry will turn into manure very fast. And manure is good for growth, you know. Yes? The next twelve months, 
you make yourself in such a way that you are not the issue in your life, not at all. Can you do this to yourself? You deserve this, I'm telling you, that you're not the trouble. Only if somebody is causing trouble to you, some trouble in your life. If you sit alone, you're never the trouble. Make yourself like that. For this you do one thing, all of you. Start today, okay? One thing that you don't want yourself to be, one small aspect, okay? Drop it today. Every full moon day, drop one more thing. However small it is, but concrete step, not big things. No, I will give up my anger. I don't believe such nonsense <laughs> You can say, from now on if I get angry, I will just shut my mouth, I won't say anything. This is doable, yes? I will not get angry is not… right now not doable, isn't it? So like this, one concrete step every month you take about yourself. Something that you do not like, something that you feel is not necessary for your life, one little thing drop every month. In twelve months' time, you will be a wonderful human being, that you are not an issue. Do that to yourself, you deserve this and it's worth it, isn't it? Thank you.